So hello everybody, my name is Ruth Pazuelo from Romancurva.com and today we are going to talk about reporting features, analytic features, data connectivity features and other features that the Power BI team has released for the Power BI Desktop October 2018 update. All of that in just a second. So hello and welcome back. It is Power Week. It means that the Power BI team has released a new Power BI desktop version and we're going to talk about the new released features. Feature number one, it is the search and filter cards uh, feature. You know when you are in Power BI desktop and you have the filter pane and you put uh, columns there, if you have a lot of values before you can search for the values, let's say that you have country and you have a lot of countries, you have to scroll down to find the country that you wanted. Well, now there is a search filter. So you can just type what you need and it will search the value for you. So, so much easier. I mean, I've seen a lot of those columns having tons and tons of um, data. So this is very, very useful. The next one is improved accessible authoring experiences. So for people with disabilities, this will allow them to work with Power BI. I don't know exactly the details, uh, but go and check them out on the blog. The next one I want to talk about is the analytics. Uh, I talk about, you know, the composite model feature that they released. I think it was in August 2018. I have a video on that. Make sure you go and check it out. And what is happening now is that when you're creating composite models on the desktop, you can actually publish them on Power BI service. It was not possible until now. Now you can have the entire Power BI experience for yourself when authoring composite models, which is really good, ni really nice feature. Another feature is, you know, the explain, increase, decrease functionality. I also have a video for that. Uh, they actually made it available for all types of measures. Before it was only available for sum and count, and now it is available for any type. And depending on what type of measures you have, you will see either a waterfall chart, that's for example with sum and count, you will see a dot plot, or you will see other types of charts. So Microsoft is or Power BI is deciding which chart is best depending on how data is aggregated. If you don't know what that is, again, go and check that video out. Next, we have the web by example connector that is generally available. That means that it's not in preview anymore, so you don't have to tick that box and that Microsoft feels that they are ready to release it as a full feature on Power BI. If you don't know what that web connector is or does, check that video. I already have a video explaining everything about it. Okay, so now it's available for everybody. They have also released a bunch of connectors, SIP, uh, Business Warehouse for, you know, all kinds of uh, types. We have uh, for Dynamics, we have, uh, just go to the blog post and check them out. There are a few connectors. I don't have any access to those connectors or at least no public access, so I can't show you. Then we have um, the possibility to control how data is exported in Power BI. You know, when you create a Power BI desktop file and you publish it online, you can, you had before like a possibility to say, be able to analyze in Excel, export data or not. You can do that now in Power BI Desktop. So you have three options, either export summarized data, and you do that in Power BI Desktop. So export summarized data, you can export summarized or underlying data, or don't be able to export any data at all. And the export summarized data where it basically does, imagine that you have a table with dates, countries, and the customers, for example, and you decide to create a visual that has only year and country. So that is summarized data. So when the user exports, it only exports what they see on the visual. Export underlying data basically means that it will be able to export everything. So the entire table that it was behind, even if they can't see the data on the visual. So you have to be careful with that and make sure that you choose the right option. But that is quite a neat feature. 
And then they have a new transport layer security settings. So for those of you that work with Power BI security, just go there and check it out. It would make no sense for me to, to explain it here, but you should upgrade to the new layer security. So th that is basically it. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of features. I hope you're enjoying it. Let me know what you think about the new updates down below. And I'll see you again on Friday. Until then, take care. Bye.